Good morning. Good morning. I'm Clary Somerville. I'm one of the senior administrators here at Montgomery College. And on behalf of the president of Montgomery College, Dr. Darian Pollard, the board of trustees, the administrators, the faculty, and staff of the college, I take great pleasure in welcoming you, our Accenture partners, and our students from the Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus to our presentation in the Skills to Succeed joint venture with Accenture. We are in for a stimulating conversation with our keynote speaker today, Ms. Rena Samat. And she's going to be talking about e-branding and networking. How many of you have a handheld device? An iPod, an iPad, uh, an iPhone, an Android, yes, all hands, good. How many of you use social media? Twitter, Facebook, Skype, Pinterest, yes, good. If you have devices and you use them to connect with people, then you're in for a treat. Let's listen to Ms. Rina Samant a customer relations specialist with Accenture. Our partnership with Accenture provides a wonderful opportunity to empower you, our students, to examine your options for a world in which you will be competing with people from Boyd's in Montgomery County and Bangalore. We live in a global economy and being globally aware and globally competitive are essential skills. We are enriching the life of the students at the college as well as our entire Montgomery County community by continuing our strong partnership with Accenture. Thus far this academic year, we've had over six presentations by Accenture executives to students on all three campuses <coughs> of the college. We are excited about embarking on this partnership, which plans to equip 250,000 people around the globe by 2015 with the skills to get a job or to build a business. With Ms. Samat giving up her time and energy to us today, what a tremendous opportunity for you to grow as individuals. You're gonna have a real world glimpse into the world of business and to into the world of networking and e-branding. Many thanks to our Montgomery College partners who work with us in our relationship with Accenture. And with that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Samant. Rena Sampat, sorry, is a senior manager with management consulting, customer relations management practice at Accenture. Rena is a social media consultant, helping organizations know how to strategically leverage both traditional and social media forums to extract customer insight and increase customer loyalty and satisfaction. With that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Sempat. Let's give her a rousing moment. Thank you so much. Um, it really is an honor to come and speak to you guys. Um, I know I look really young, which is probably why I'm doing all the social media stuff. Just kidding. Uh, I've been with Accenture for eight and a half years, and I do specialize in advising our federal organizations on how to leverage social media. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm hopefully you guys will have a lot of questions for me. I'm going to have this presentation really in two parts. The first part, we're just going to go through some talking about you and your brand in terms of social media, things that you need to look out for in terms of applying for jobs. Whether you're on social media or not, it does matter, right? So if you're not on social media, people are searching for you and you're not showing up. So that's going to arouse curiosity as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. The second half, we'll, we'll abandon the slideware and we'll abandon some activities. And I'm just going to go onto a drawing on the board. And the drawing on the board is really about how we go about advising companies and I'm going to talk a lot about more commercial companies like Apple and Google of how they need to be leveraging social media. And I'm sure you guys will have hopefully a lot of questions about that. So it's twofold. It's first about you and your brand, and then it's about 
the fact that companies care about their brand on social media too and how do we Accenture advise them. And hopefully you guys will have a ton of questions. Um, and this is an entire career for me. So uh, this, the little 45 minute glimpse here is just a, a snapshot of what you can really specialize in if you choose to. Any questions for me so far? All right, so the first thing is what is online networking? What do you guys think it is? LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. Why LinkedIn? Why did you pick that one out of all the ones out there? Well, I know like because when you connect with someone, you also can see their network of people as well. And then so if you need to get in like an introduction into a company, you can ask this guy to introduce you to this guy. Right. Great. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to play off of that in a second. Anyone else have a different definition of the way you do, you think of online networking? Really, like besides LinkedIn, anything like Facebook or Instagram or anything where you can connect to a group of people that have similar interests or careers or anything like that. Um, you know, using keywords, buzzwords, things like anything really. Right. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to ask a follow-up question, and I promise I'm going to answer my own question. Uh, what do you guys think the power, why is online networking so different than normal networking? We're in a room together. Um, just, um, as far as cheaper to communicate instead of That's very true. Okay, absolutely. Cost to serve cheaper, that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely cr true. So we talked about cheaper and richer. I saw a hand over here. That's right. Now one more. If you reach a broader mass of uh, people in a small amount of time, then you really do lose those cases. Yep. You, so you guys hit exactly on the head. A couple key things that make it different. It goes viral at the speed of lightning. So innovation, if you think about the old days, right, when uh, the Apple computer first came out, you guys know with the Apple with the different colors and the green screen. I mean, it took a long time for adoption to occur around, you know, just looking at the nation, for people to get computers, to get that kind of computer. Now one technology comes out and it goes viral like that. Why is that? Because of the networking. Now what's interesting on a point over here was, uh, you were talking about the fact that it's cheaper. It absolutely is cheaper to network online and someone said it's more comfortable. Absolutely. So the power of social media is this idea of informal networks. So when I go to a job, everyone traditionally would have been like, my boss is in my network because he re I report to him. But in reality, I'm friends with Bob over there that works at a totally different department. And we have this natural bond, whether because we are a similar hobby, because we go hiking together, whatever. It, social media exploits the power of informal networks. And that's really the key. And it can go viral because of that, because it's human, right? It's talking about things where people are comfortable. Uh, the other thing was more people are more comfortable, it's richer data. And this is really where I get into advising companies of how do you mine rich data where people are being 120% themselves and use that to your advantage. Now that can sound a little scary, and it, it is. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I see a question. A hundred percent. So exactly, that's what we're going to talk about today. T today, if, if your brand comes off the wrong way, it's pretty much going to be very hard for you to recoup. So similar to the fact that face-to-face -face takes slower, hi, how are you, what's your name, and you kind of, it takes what, I'd say a good five, ten minutes to warm up, a warm up round into the conversation. Social media, I just Google you, boom, I like know your entire private life, right? And now all of a sudden, if your brand comes across to me wrong, it's going to be very hard for you to recoup. It's absolutely, it's actually the point. Absolutely. So you guys really hit it on the nail. So it's viral, it's rich, um, and it is changing. Whether One thing about social media that I, another takeaway for you guys, and hopefully I'm not one to walk literally through the slides, so hopefully you guys are okay with that. Um, social media, first of all, cannot be generalized. No one says, oh, you know, there are what we call brick and mortar spaces, right? When you walk into the Apple store, I keep using Apple, I don't know why. Um, uh, you walk into the Ryzen store, uh, there's call centers, right? These are traditional channels. A lot of people bucket social media as if it's one channel. It's not, right? If you look at Facebook, Facebook actually is a, getting a high adoption from people in this, 
you know, somewhere in the mid 20s, upper 30s, and then the older generations really happen on social media. If any of you guys have kids, you would know that a lot of the kids these days don't want to be near Facebook. They absolutely don't, are not interested in it, but it does not mean that they're not in other social media sites. So when people talk about social media, you cannot generalize it as a single channel. You cannot say, oh, well, I'm not on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, just because those are the most popular. It is an explosion of channels. That's the, what's interesting about social media. Different generations, different people will adopt. It is cheaper, it's rich, and it's digital. And so as these new things that I haven't even dreamed up start popping up, they really should be seen as different channels, like a, a call center is seen as different than a brick and mortar site. Those are two different channels. Facebook and Twitter are two different channels. And these other ones that keep popping up that my job is to try to keep up with what's young, those are different channels. And people, a lot of times, you know, the first thing is wipe that idea that social is one space. It's not. It's a bunch of different channels. And now you've got to do the analytics and the thought process around it. That kind of, when someone told me that, actually my boss told me that, it kind of blew my mind. I was like, oh, I got a full-time job now, uh, <laughs> sort of keeping up with what's new and hip. Uh, so really the fact is uh, online networking, according to some of these CEOs and, and key people, is really what people want to do online. It's the rapid adoption, so we talked about that. Um, I think the, the key for you guys, really, I'm going to talk about in this first half of the presentation, is what comes across. So social media has changed the way that companies go and search for candidates or source candidates or find out about candidates. There hasn't been a lot of policy written about what companies can and cannot do when it comes to finding out information about you behind the scenes. And if they are, they're only in certain companies. So it's not a blanket thing where someone says you cannot use Facebook data uh, in order to you know, identify or decide whether you want to give someone a job or not. And even if they do, do you think that these people don't know how to go to the internet in two seconds and search your name and just act like they never saw whatever it is they saw? But it's that uh, impression that they're left right, right? These decision makers are. So it doesn't really matter. It is shifting the changing of the game. And the second half of this presentation, it's not just about you and you guys trying to get a job. It's also about companies, right? Companies are in a mass competition now about their brand and how it's coming across on social media. So that's what we'll talk about in the second half. All right. So, can I just not go through these each and each? Who has ever thought, before I go into these slides, who's actually ever thought about their online brand? And if you have, can you give me an example of something you've done about it? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay, great. Did any has anyone else done that? I spent a lot of time in the military. Yeah. So I used to have like this gentleman a Facebook account, but I deleted it because, you know, a lot of not only things that I would post on there, but what my friends and stuff would post. Right. It's kind of a reflection of my character, so I just axed it. Right. Anyone else do some any drastic measure? I had a, a small company for a little while and yeah. had a Facebook profile on there. Yeah. Um, for a while, I just thought, well, you know, people are going to go to the company website, but then people started to find out that I was part of the company, so right. I had to completely change my settings. I didn't get rid of my Facebook, but right. I changed my settings for access and what was visible. That's um, right. Because I still wanted to be visible as a person, right. Um, right. especially behind a small company, but right. I didn't want the pictures of me wearing a lampshade uh, at a <laughs> New Year's party to be visible to everybody. Okay, great. So I've heard so much about people removing things, and we'll talk about how that makes you feel. In a sec, has anyone added something to social media? I feel like your hand, you're itching. <laughs> you have a question. You know, like you're talking about how the professionalizing and the socializing. Yes. You go, you go to work, you yeah. work there, like, so you're still comfortable. Yeah. So how do you kind of work though with that, you know, Facebook and the socializing? Yes. People wear that hat show. That's right. Like, that's you and your family. That's right. Uh, It's a very good question. I promise I'll answer it after I hear someone, hopefully, that's added some sort of, done something added to social media. Have you guys ever thought about that? Like, hey, I should be on Twitter, or hey, I should get, get on LinkedIn, or hey, I should add my skills on LinkedIn and make them up to date. I mean, in the same token, when um, we started this company, we just did the Facebook thing, and then um, I started to really get into the whole 
social media thing, and I had done Twitter personally mm -hmm. and hated it, mm -hmm. and then got back on it just for the company, mm -hmm. and then also really started getting into Instagram, but mm -hmm. what I called professional Instagramming, where I was like looking at, because it's food, right. I was looking at what people were eating, yeah. um, and it was something that I normally personally would never have done, but right. for the company I was doing it to see what was Sure, yeah. sure, okay, makes sense. All right, so let me come back to your point. So where does that line cross over? So it is very tricky. Um, the fact is the world of personal life and professional life is absolutely blended because of social media. That's just a fact that no one can ignore. And if you try to ignore it, you'd be on no presence, right? And that's, that's, that's a tactic, right? And that's a viable tactic. I don't want to have any presence on social media. Okay, then guess what? That's a great tactic, and it means that you better be reaching out and getting face-to-face -face interactions because everyone else has their social media that's going viral so people can know their name. So that's number one. Number two, where I personally do it, actually, I have a Facebook page. Um, I make sure not to friend anyone that I work with, and I actually don't put my Accenture brand because I already have a job. I'm good. And what I don't want to do is people mining me for, you know, people reaching out to me because they know I'm a social media expert, and now all of a sudden they're in my space, and I think the privacy settings are huge. Um, so that's my tactic, but I'm also not trying to seek a new job, right? I'm trying to protect uh, people reaching out to me sort of unsolicited for feedback, right, around my social media presence. Now, if I was searching for a job, my, my, my plan would be very different. So typically, I guess my advice is here as we talk about this slide, which is you guys, want, you, when you're trying to look for a job, you write down the companies you want to go for. You write down the people you want to meet because of something you want to do. You should have another column to say, what social media sites do I need to be, one, researching to find names that I didn't think of myself, as well as what channels in social media, because they're different, right? LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and all these are very different. What matter to these jobs, what don't? If you're getting a job, if you're trying to seek a job with Twitter, for example, or LinkedIn, your, your, uh, your forcefulness in social media should be violently different than if you're trying to get a job possibly with General Motors. If you're trying to get a job with General Motors, maybe it's about making sure your brand isn't coming off, people aren't seeing funny pictures of you, maybe six months before you're starting to apply for these jobs. It's not to say that it needs to violate your entire life. We're talking about a window of when you're seeking jobs to when you actually get the job, right? Then obviously you have to protect your brand and that's very natural. We're not talking about your whole life is gonna be exploited here, right? But the fact is you cannot deny the fact that people can access you and your name very easily, especially if you have unique names like me, where if you type in Rena Sampet, it really is not that hard to find pictures of me. Um, it's, it's not as uh, common as you would think, that name. So uh, there it is, right? So the more unique your name is, actually the easier you are to find. And that's a good and bad thing, right? So I guess to answer your question, the, the line is definitely there, and I'm challenging you guys, the, as much of due diligence you think about who you want to talk to, it is no different in terms of not only what you remove from social media, but what you add. To your comment about Twitter, so one thing about social media that's very interesting and even I struggle with, is a lot of people, including myself, judge a social media channel when they first enter it. So I went onto Twitter too uh, about maybe four or five years ago. I started trying to be active in it, and I was like, I don't like this thing. Like, I don't get it. You know, I really don't get it. But it doesn't matter. Guess what? They experienced enormous uptake. And now I'm behind the times. I mean, this is a channel that is viable. It is a very large company. Um, a lot of these companies obviously st uh, stand up in San Francisco. LinkedIn, for example, is also exploding globally. So it's not about just getting a job here in the US. They are pushing hard for actually expanding their Hong Kong offices, et cetera. So it is opening up brand new doors. So if you're judged a social media channel two years ago, I challenge you to rethink your presence and whether or not you do or do not want to be on that channel because these channels are emerging and evolving and maturing at a very rapid speed. So your judgment two years ago, you need to rethink about that now and then make your decision whether you want to be on it or not. And not being on it is a perfectly fine answer for your brand if you are willing to go face to face and you think that you can make that happen. But do recognize the advantage that someone else might have over you in creating that network. Any questions so far? Hopefully this is resonating with you guys. All right, um, <laughs> I like the last one here, don't be that guy. Um, the internet is big and it's changing and it's evolving and it is getting more and more personal. We're gonna talk about that in terms of what companies can find out about you and your preferences because it's not against the law at this point, right? So we have to be, we'll talk about a little bit about that and how people can use that information. All right, um, so there's a couple tips here in terms of what things to do um, I think the first one, uh, who hasn't Googled their name in the past six months? 
Okay. You guys are active, huh? Has, has not, sorry, who has not Googled their name in the past six months? Okay. All right, you guys are pretty good. I'd say for you, if you, that's the one thing because that's very easy to do. Um, and you just want to know what's popping up. And these things are called search engines. So if you don't like what's popping up, you need to go untag yourself into whatever it is that's tagging you. And or you need to start violently posting stuff that you want to create your brand so it's popping up in these search engines. It's just too easy um, to not do. Uh, and it's not about removing or adding. Networking goes both ways. So one thing about Accenture is, you know, we always say during our interview process that it is about whether or not you're a fit, if you're a fit for our company, but are we a fit for you, right? And so what, what social media does is it allows people, forget the bad pictures or the naughty pictures or anything that's personal. People will have an impression about you and they'll have an impression of whether or not you fit with them. Right? So we talk about this informal thing. It's about what kind of presence that you want to create. So let me give an example. I met someone who was actually an undergrad. I uh, was interviewing him, and he is uh, she's a engineer that does not want an engineering job. But man, when I Googled him, he had like engineering written all over him, like technical engineering. So I'm like, if this is not what you want to go after, this is what you are. This is, this is what's coming across. So, you know, if, just because if you have a personal preference, a personal desire to get into social media or to get into designing, graphic designing, yet nothing is popping up around your name, you need to make it happen. I'll give an example. The graphic design. Let's say you want to be a graphic designer. There is a website called allexperts.com. It is a very easy website. It's free. You can sign up and you can say, hey, I'm an expert, and you can give advice to other people. And guess what? When you do that, guess what? Your name's going to start, that link is going to start popping up on Google search engines. And now you're creating a presence for yourself around being an expert in something that you're actually trying to get a job for. Does that make sense? So a lot of times what's in your mind and what the impression is, is very different. Actually, I was up for promotion this year and someone said, uh, you know, they said, well, I said, this is my brand. This is who I am. Like, and I described it. And then the person was like, that's not your brand at all. Like, uh, this is my impression of you. So, you know, ask other people, just if you think face-to-face -face is valuable, ask other people, what is my brand? And then hear what they have to say. Think about if that's what you want to come across, and then to do the same thing on social media, right? If you think you're coming across some way, start Googling yourself, start looking at your Facebook, and what is the impression that's forming? It's, it's, a, it's a tough one to hear someone talk about uh, your brand when, when that's not what you thought you were. Uh, some of my boss was like, you're a really, really hard worker. And I was like, well, I don't want that to be my brand. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, don't, don't, I mean, these are obvious, right? So privacy settings are really important. The one thing about social media that is evolving in a good way is the security around your privacy and being able to block who sees what. I only see that going in the right direction, which is fantastic. Um, it is, these, these spaces are just so new and immature um, from a channel perspective, right? Uh, that this is only a good thing and you want to always keep up. They come up with changes on privacy settings for all of these different sites almost almost weekly, almost monthly. Um, you want to be up to speed on what those are and make sure that you're not accidentally, unknowingly opting into something. So uh, big advice, especially when you're looking for a job, is to continue to, to check on that. So the fact is 45% of companies in the 2009, this is a little old dated survey, um, reported using social media profiles to pass judgment um, and not hire candidates. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Surprising. Why do you think they do it? That's exactly, that's exactly right. So in today's era, they can find way more about you than they used to be able to. And guess what? It's called human nature. They're going to go and look for it. Again, certain companies do have policies that, that you know, do uh, abide against that. But that's not necessarily all companies, especially a lot of small companies. So if you're trying to get hired at a small company, especially know that they're going to look you up. All right, so this is just kind of interesting. Um, things that you want to be careful of. Again, I think the, the comment around, you know, God, this is just feels really invasive. This is my personal life. Again, that is a very valid comment, right? And no one says that you can't be you. Um, but I do think you need to be aware of, again, when you start looking for a job to the point in which you're hired and have gained a reputation. Not to say you should be posting anything unreasonable after that, but I'm saying you need to be aware of the window in which people might be searching you at a higher rate. 
um, and making sure your brand's coming across. Because people are not going to actively search you your entire life, right? And that's not going to happen. So you got to be aware of what those windows are and be conscious to shift your network or change your privacy settings accordingly. Any of this surprise you? Hopefully it shouldn't. And, and again, the delete function, if you just uh, accidentally write something and you look back and you're cleansing your space, right? Uh, just like you cleanse your friends uh, in person and on Facebook, right? It doesn't happen, it's not a Facebook thing. It's an in-person thing too. People cleanse their friends. It's no different. It's just that you're taking an action to click X. Very important on that delete functions. These search engines are very smart, right? The more attention an image gets, the higher it shows up on any sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, search engine. So that's, that's the risk that the companies, it's not to say that people aren't human and people need to let loose and have a good time, it's that the image was taken and the person, and it was probably promoted. And is that the kind of reputation that they want to carry, yes or no? And when we're looking at, and a lot of people are like, again, very personal, right? I get this all the time, very personal. I'm not comfortable with that. It's life. And when I'm comparing someone who has no, not that kind of picture versus someone that has that picture, it's what do you think the decision I'm going to make? We're going to talk about a little bit about advances in technology and how unfortunately for all of us, it is getting easier and easier to mine insight and, and garner uh, judgments systematically, but we'll get into that in a second. Right now it's a very manual process. No one can deny that this is shifting, uh, you know, privacy. It, it, there's no denying that. So in terms of what used to be very private, um, if you think about even the evolution of uh, phones and how easily they can take high definition pictures, right? Taking a picture takes a second. Um, another way to think about your brand, and then I'm going to shift talking about how we advise some corporate agencies when they think about their brands is a little bit different, uh, obviously. But every day you wake up and you put clothes on and you pick consciously what your brand is for that day. It's not just about when you go for a job, right? You know, maybe if I'm trying to, you know, be on a sports team, I'm going to pick like my coolest sport outfit and I'm going to feel good and that is the presence I'm bringing. There is no difference in social media, right? So you got to be conscious about the brand that you're picking. You pick your clothes, it's the same difference. And if you if you ignore it, you are going to be behind. It's just one of those things. Now again, to emphasize, it's not to say you need to be active in it. It needs to say you need to protect your own brand. You need to protect your brand during certain windows that matter to you in your life, like getting a job, maybe trying to find a significant other. Maybe there's a certain part of you you want to kind of keep a little bit hidden, right, during that window in the newly dating phases. It's just no different than your face-to-face. You're going to put your best foot forward in face-to-face. -face. You want to do the same thing on the phone. You want to do the same thing on social media. And social media, again, is an explosion of channels. Um, so you have to be careful about making sure that you're up to speed of where you're popping up because uh, there are places I would never have thought my name was popping up. Any questions so far uh, about you guys and, and your brand? We're going to do one quick exercise and then I'm going to shift for a couple minutes talking about what I do every day. <laughs> uh, all right, is this post okay? I mean, as a woman, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> Why do you think it wouldn't be okay if someone, an HR person, found it? This person, um, they're obviously going through something emotional, but the thing is, they're they're venting about something on social media, so they're you know they aren't able to mask their you know their feelings, their true emotions, and be able to proceed forward with you know, their everyday. They're venting on social media. This person in the office could have a problem and turn around and vent to other you know people in the office. That's what it's right. I heard someone here, yeah. Um, when you're making generalizations online, the risk of uh, catching those uh, generalizations you make could be someone who's involved. Uh, like Tom would say, uh, this person can get, they have small control for it, so it's just getting to the point of attention, probably one of the bosses that catches it. Right, like that. right. And what if I'm a guy and I'm reading this? I'm HR, I'm making the decision. You might have to see that as dysfunctional, not mm -hmm. working well with others, so mm -hmm. it's the workplace. Right. Yep, yep, that's right. So the idea is that this can come off really discriminatory. You know, if I'm like, a, that's exactly right. If, if I'm a guy, especially if I'm a guy, you know, there's, and this is where the, in, when we talked about informal network, right? There is a 50-50 chance where the person that sees that that's making a decision, maybe I'm like, go girl, I, I can relate to that girl, you know, and, there, and this informal bond connects, right? It is an unspoken thing, an undocumented thing, right? Informal networking and social media is very undocumented. There's this 
this merging. But it can also reverse completely the other way, where someone now is like, man, this person's like all like on a power trip, and I don't, I want to have this person in my company because mm -hmm. they're very emotional. That was the, the point. So again, you just want to be careful of any extreme judgment in that window that could occur. Exactly. You know, so you should absolutely, it's your space. It's just a matter about how, many, how much attention it gets and if that's the first thing that pops up. And I think that's what really matters. It's not to say you can't be your, yourself. And so you know, this presentation, I 100% I agree. If I went through, and man, if I tried to cleanse out everything, or so that would be very painful and I'd feel like I was stripping a part of my soul out. I get you. But the important part here is understand where it pops up in the search engines because then you have to research yourself to figure that out because of attention, because of likes or whatever the case is. And also understand where you are in your window of life in terms of what is the brand that you're trying to portray at that given moment in time. Because uh, it is a blurred line. It's not, it's not intended to be a clean answer. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those things, it doesn't mean that you have to delete the fact that you had a fight with your boyfriend and you're trying to mend. It's, there's a lot of social networks now have the ability to make certain things public and certain things private. And so it's really just like looking at your Facebook page and looking at it somebody publicly would see it versus how you see it, because they can be two very different things. So you can have you know, personal family things that only those people can see, but you can also have a Facebook page that publicly, when a you know, company goes to look at it, it's going to look very differently. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, I will say on the good news, LinkedIn, I think, is a good thing for trying to start to merge these lines. So LinkedIn actually only became popular in the North America market a couple years ago. It, it did a startup. People started to get on it. They were having a hard time getting the adoption. I'm sure you guys know this. Facebook was easily getting the adoption. LinkedIn was struggling. Actually, the kind of reverse is happening now, where people are dropping Facebook and they're joining LinkedIn. But a while ago, LinkedIn wasn't taken very seriously, and it is now. So a lot of people get jobs through LinkedIn. And I think, to your comment, this is great news for trying to start to separate where a company had no choice or didn't feel like they went to Google, Facebook came up. Now LinkedIn profiles are coming up and they'll want to lick on that too. So I think at minimum, at minimum, you need to create a LinkedIn profile would be my recommendation and you need to make sure your best professional self is on there. Um, so if you choose to not be on any other social media or website, this is a professional place that is picking up, not just in the North American market, but globally. And it is a space for professionalism and only professionalism. And I think that is only good news and hopefully they'll continue to grow um, and other companies will come up. Um, and as that happens, that line will start to be less, less blurry. It's kind of like, um, it's no different than when you think about small companies. You go to a face-to-face -face interview and I'm interviewing you. A small company is going to be, can often ask very personal, informal questions versus larger companies are very standardized in their HR processes. Small companies can really feel a little invasive. They'll get into who are you, they'll ask you very challenging questions. You know, larger companies tend to be very process oriented, very policy oriented. It's the same sort of thing. As these social media sites are smaller, and they're starting to explode, you want to make sure that your brand is coming across. And as LinkedIn grows presence, that line will become clear. But it's not quite there yet, and we need to recognize that. All right, so really last in the, pa in the last five minutes here, and then I'll answer for questions and let you guys uh, go on with your day. Um, I want to talk about, you talked about so your social matters, but companies know that their brand matters too. So I wanted to quickly, guys, give you an insight of how we advise companies. So we really say it's two things. Social media is to engage with the consumer or to listen. Um, quickly, and I'm going to st stick on the listening because I think it's really interesting how technologies are changing to allow people to listen. But to engage really fast, it's to get new customers, acquire new customers. So people are using social media to spread their brand. Um, it's uh, really in a global space, it's called the brand war, where all the companies are starting to offer very similar services and products, and it's about who's more affinity to which brand. And since social goes viral, they can actually use that to their advantage. And they're very, very intelligent. Uh, they're very, uh, they're social media plan. So just like you have a call center plan, you have a brick and mortar plan. There are social media ch channel plans, so for Facebook, for Twitter. 
experience, uh, Best Buy does this very well. So they're 12 force where you can actually tweet a question instead of having to call and an agent will actually respond to you. Someone you had made the point about the cheaper channel. This is massive for organizations. If I can avoid a, t a $10 call, which is approximately typically what it costs when you call a call center, and I can tweet it back, it is significantly cheaper to get you that resolution of pick picture BlackBerry or whatever the case is. So this is definitely a huge space. And I actually, uh, there's a bank in Europe called Vantage Union in which Accenture helped them tweet secure, uh, securely tweet back someone's uh, balance in their bank. So you can say, what's my balance? Because I forgot. And they'll tweet back securely that balance without uh, ever someone being able to ever hack into that. And I only see that that's happening more. Innovation is the concept of crowdsourcing. So Starbucks uses this. Uh, Starbucks has like their own dedicated website that's separate from Starbucks.com where you can actually suggest ideas and they'll use that to not only say, hey, here's a great idea, we should do it, but to market to the public, I listen to your idea. And if I listen to your idea, guess what? You're more likely to buy Starbucks, right? So it's this idea of innovation, but also garnering more of the crowd to become, uh, to buy from me and, and be loyal to my brand. Most interesting space is insight. So really quickly, this is where I spent a lot of my time. Uh, so technologies is really evolving when I, in the world of unstructured text. Unstructured text is text is basically values that don't fit nicely into databases. So like your age and where you're from fits nicely in like a database. Rena, this is how old she is. This is the company she works for. The paragraph that I write to my friend doesn't fit so nicely. There's a lot of topics. I'm talking about my boyfriend. I'm talking about my mom. I'm talking about my company, whatever it is that I'm talking about. There's a lot of things in that one sentence. Technology is evolving, and it's called text mining, where these small uh, companies have linguists, like professional language people, in combination with IT technology people who can take sentences and do what you did in fifth grade, which is say noun, adverb, verb. And then from there, once I tag the sentence and a tag a paragraph, I can now start to say, Rena was talking about her work, she was talking about her friends, and this is the sentiment value she was talking about. So she's very negative about her work and very positive about her friends, for example. Now, do that at scale. It's scary. And it's happening right now for multiple languages. Good question. So big data, exactly. Big data would be in the, in the social space, it's the social monitoring, which is there are a lot of people talking in a lot of different sites. How do I house all that and bring it in? That's the big data part. The uh, voice of the customer analytics is the text mining. So now do I take all that big data, both structured, which is the nice clean one, and the unstructured, and now how do I allow technologies to mine language and garner meaning? Uh, it is, guys, if you're not scared by this, you should be. Um, so all the chats that happen, right, on, it used to be AOL and now Google. I mean, we're talking about now technology that's not there yet. They're not there yet, it's calm. But in about five years, they are, they are evolving very quickly where they can take massive amounts of unstructured data and pretty much generalize you. Paragraphs. And it's happening at a pretty rapid speed. And then again, it's the combination of IT people marrying up with linguists, which is really exciting if you're ever a work for these small venture companies. It's a very interesting culture. Uh, the other part is social influence, which is that idea of the informal network and trying to figure out who's talking to who and who's friends with who and then using that to your advantage. Companies are very much doing this. Uh, you think that you really like that product. No, they, they targeted you for that product, right? Google's known for this, right, in terms of using what you say in your email to market things to you on the right. Still, from our perspective, Accenture's perspective, this is in the very immature stage now. This has a long way to go. And why long way, by the way? A couple years. Right, two years. I mean, this this technology evolves very quickly because there's a lot of small vendor. What's happening is a lot of small companies are popping up, and big companies are swallowing. They're merging them, right? So then they use that power to push that innovation further. It's absolutely happening. So come, big companies care about their brand just like you guys should care about your brand. Technologies, unfortunately, haven't gotten. And that uh, lady was just walked away, but they haven't gotten to the space where it's absolutely spread. I'm not sure we're going to see that in our lifetime in the space that we would like. This is the life, this is the generation that we're living in where this is a really a new space and we do need to protect our brand and companies also need to protect their brand and fight for their reputation. It's no different between you and the company. I'll close my last comment here, I know it's 11, is uh, someone said this well that the world in which commercials will be personalized to you on your TV is not that far away. You will see commercials that are tailored to you, you won't realize it. They're just showing to you, not that area to you. 
that's not as far away as you think. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. I do welcome any questions for you to come up to me Questions. at the very end. Yep.